Hello everyone, thanks for tuning back to the Ponderosa. Man, it's been a while since I've made videos on this channel, huh? You know, uh, a lot of stuff going on here. A new location that you're probably not familiar with seeing. Where is my RV parked right now? Why are we not at the traditional Ponderosa? What's up with the pool pump and everything else? Yes, the pool heater and the jacuzzi. Guys, a lot of stuff has happened and I gotta get to telling you why, but we are no longer at the original Ponderosa location that I was so excited about. And things happen with families and things happen for reasons. So we're gonna update you on that. In the meantime, where I'm staying now is, uh, well, we'll get to that in the future in the next couple of videos. But what I wanna show you is I have upgraded all my batteries in this box. My RV has been off grid every day from about 10 in the morning to about three in the afternoon. AC, you know, air conditioner, TVs, refrigerator, everything. And with this new battery plant that I put in, of course the pollen is just terrible up here. Look at the pollen. It's over though, the winter's gone. So I gotta get rid of um, all this pollen on here. But uh, this battery plant that I just upgraded to with all these batteries is phenomenal. What a big difference. And I'm gonna show you right now, I'm gonna open it up and show you exactly what my new battery plant consists of on the solar RV off-grid uh, scenario. Now I do keep rubber in here. Wow, that sun's blinding me. I keep rubber in here for a couple reasons and I, I do not have the cover on here. So when you look at a hodgepodge, you're thinking, what the hell is all this wiring here? It's all in its place. I just gotta get these things tied up. I'm just using it for testing, but I got rubber in here in case somebody drops something in here we don't want to have fire hazards so let me show you what i got here let me take this out and i'm going to show you i did each and every one of these connections now right away you're like oh my god what a cluster now okay so this is the best way i can do this but what i have here is now the alpha cell let's see if i can, alpha cell 100 xtv these are um uh, the, the 100 XTVs are, I think, 60 amp hours, and the depth of discharge is 20%. They're sealed AGM batteries. Uh, so what I did was I had to rerun all the cables again, and this is a 24-volt system. So I have one, two, three, four, five in parallel 12 volts. One, two, three, four, five parallel 12 volts, and then I ran both of those 12-volt banks in series to make 24 volts. So actually I have two, uh, six times uh, five, th uh, 300 amp hours. So 300 amp hours is what I had in the old. I had one, two, three, four, five, six. Six of the flooded uh, maintenance type with the caps. Uh, lead, traditional lead acid RV batteries, 100 amp hours. So these are 60s, but uh, the depth of discharge is now 20%. You can go down to before it's no good for the batteries. These are also commercial grade, AT&T and, and uh, telco grade batteries. They are lighter, so for every one, I got two in there. Well, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this. Now, I am no solar expert, but I did stay in a Holiday Inn last night. I can tell you that I have already pulled this thing five, 600 miles, never once had any issue with the weight. Uh, nothing has changed with the weight. My uh, my truck with the you know 250 horse tuner on there does not even care that the trailer's behind it. So I have one aught cable and I crimped every single one of these connectors with the hydraulic pneumatic compression tool. And this is the only way I could really do this because uh, it's hard to to get those wires where I need them to go. And not only that, uh, I have enough room to take these apart if I have to and, and move them out of the way. Whereas, you know, long story short, I bought heat shrink, I bought one aught cable. Uh, this is Windy Nation cable. This is battery and welding cable from Amazon. And the connectors are all the copper, uh, tin copper or the solid copper. Where's this, you see solid copper ones over here like this. But they're all pretty much, you know, those connectors are like $12 for a 10 pack. I got the fuse here for now on the main feed, 200 amp fuse. Um, and then I have uh, the other two batteries over there, which are, so that's basically 120 amp hours, 12 volt, the same kind for the 12 volt system. So the 24 volt system to my inverter, the 12 volt over there for the uh, lights, the fart fan, the, you know, outdoor lights and stuff like that. My 60 amp charge controller, I gotta put the cover back on here, but I just wanted to make sure I was finished with all this before I get these alligator clips off, run the wires and seal it up. But what you're seeing here is, uh, 
it actually works okay and let's see i hear the inverter running so right now the ac just kicked back on we're at 24.8 volts okay that's roughly 12.4 per bank 119 volt output and if i look at the app i'm usually pulling in during the day from like 10 to 3 about 800 to a thousand watts in full sunlight and at that i'm about 40 amps of charging at a 36 volt solar array so I am drawing more than that, but you can see here that that sits there, and I mean, it's 72 degrees inside my RV. Again, it is 72 degrees in my RV with the air conditioner running full tilt. The TVs are both on. My laptop charger is plugged in. My, air, my refrigerator is on, and the voltage will stay, as long as I'm in sun, full sunlight, it will stay right about 24.8 is about where it stays. Now the old batteries that go down slower, 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 but what I've noticed is now about three o'clock, I'm going to take, I'm gonna take this off about three o'clock, put it back on commercial power. And when I do that, uh, I'll get some charge, I'll bring it up to about 25.6 volts. And tomorrow by one o'clock in the afternoon, they'll be 100% floating at only one amp of charge, uh, floating at, at uh, that floats at uh, 20, 27.8, which is uh, 13.6 or something like that. Uh, so that's right about where they want to float right here. 13.5 to 13.8 at 77 degrees is where you want those to float. So that is my new battery array. Um, and uh, with the salt, you know, it is a solar day out here. It is uh, hot. And in the summer now, I want to check in the summer and see, look, AC still running. All right, just dropped at 24.7. It is three something in the afternoon. So we're starting to go down to probably about, uh, you know, 600 something watts. We're not up to the 800 to 1,000. Uh, but we're still putting out full output. And this that inverter runs cool. I got to tell you, those fans blowing, but that thing runs way cool. So that is my upgraded battery plant, okay? And um, nothing so far. I mean, none of this gets hot. I do have a Fluke thermal camera. I know you're like, oh my God, why are you touching all that? You can get zapped. Yeah, I could, I could. But um, I have my Fluke thermal camera and at night I had this thing running full bore and I was checking all for hot spots with the Fluke thermal imaging uh, camera, infrared camera, no hot spots. These cables are ice cold. Uh, so there is no issues with anything as far as uh, excessive load. But when, it, we call this glancing. Okay? The fans even kicked off. It's still at 24.7. 24.67 and again that's because we're after three o'clock in the afternoon and uh the solar we're probably charging about 23 25 amps so uh in the height of the day today at 12 30 one o'clock i was charging while the batteries were being used so it was going up 0.1 volts every five to ten minutes with the ac on 15 amp 15,000 btu ac running both TVs, the refrigerator and everything, laptop chargers, phone chargers and stuff. So that's my update there. Uh, tell me what you think. I want to know, you know, be nice. You can tell me it sucks and it's, it's a horrible hodgepodge. I get it. it this is, you ain't gonna hurt my feelings. I got 117,000 subscribers on my other channel and, and I've learned to take abuse. Just uh, tell me what you think though. This is the best way I can do this, fitting it on the tongue here. Um, but what I know is 24 volt system, we're at 300 amp hours. Depth of discharge is down to 20% with these batteries. I have 1,265 watts of solar. The max I could take in uh, with the MPPT that I've seen is about 50 amps in, in full, full sun, about 50 amps. And um, the 36 volt solar array to an MPPT charge controller to a 24 volt battery bank that usually sits about 27 volts while it's floating. And uh, then I got the two other ones there for uh, the 12 volt system so there you have it guys that is uh, the update to the battery bank and we'll find out where i am over here and my beautiful new flagpole uh and um how hard this has been uh, rest assured i did all this before i had to make the decision to move here so thanks for watching check out the ponderosa more videos are on the way and uh stay tuned